What's going on guys? Happy New Year. Today I'm coming at you from the usually beautiful Myrtle Beach. It was a little rainy today, but that's all right. Uh, we're coming at you with another informational video. The last video that we did uh, that was kind of informational was why cast trunnions suck. This video is going to be four reasons why people think AKs are inaccurate. So let's get started. Right off the bat, caliber. Now I know this is probably going to tick off a couple of fellow AK fanboys like myself, but with the amount of ballistic data available, this one is not really negotiable. If you're looking for a DMR, 762 by 39 is not your caliber. Now here's not to say that you can't get semi-accurate hits with an AK in 7.62 by 39 out to as far as, you know, 500 yards, 600 if you're really stretching it. But the problem is it suffers from a lot of 300 blackout syndrome, whereas it drops like a fucking rock after 400 yards. Now this is not to imply that 7.62 by 39 is a bad caliber. I love the caliber, have always loved the caliber. Uh, it's great, delivers a lot of energy, and it's very cheap. However, if you're going for accuracy, there are so many better calibers in the AK, even AK native calibers, such as the 5.45 by 39. The flat shooting trajectory of the 5.45 is pretty much on par with the 5.56, making it a much better representation of what the platform is actually capable of, even still with an intermediate cartridge. Now pushing that point even farther, there are some bigger caliber options available still on the AK platform, like the Sega 308s or even the Vepers in 308 or 7.62 by 54R that can push that even farther. And 7.62 by 54R isn't exactly a caliber that was designed for ballistic coefficient, but you can still really stretch that out surprisingly accurately, which really busts that myth out of the water right off the bat that the AK platform can't hit the broad side of the barn. But we're gonna talk about a couple of reasons as why that stereotype, or even I would go as far as saying urban legend, exists. With that being said, that leads me into my second reason why people think AKs are inaccurate, and that is the wars in the Middle East, and to a lesser extent, Vietnam. Now you have to remember, before the wars in the Middle East, people in the United States did not exactly have a lot of hands-on experience with the AK platform. You know, you're just starting to see a lot of the Chinese imports and stuff like that, the Mac 90s started to get into the country. But even especially like back in Vietnam era, uh, AKs really were not a thing. You know, the, the popularization of the AK has been fairly recent. So when you have a bunch of troops deploying into Iraq and Afghanistan, a lot of them were having their first ever experiences with the AK platform. And that's where you're starting to have a couple of these things that popped up. So in Vietnam, you started getting some of the stories about the rugged reliability of the AK-47, which is attributed largely to the fact that it was just a great alternative to the piece of shit early gen M16s. Now, the Desert Storm era, or the first, you know, Operation Iraqi Freedom, that's where you start hearing a lot of stories about how shitty the AKs were with accuracy. So there's kind of two reasons why this came about. First of all, you're talking about some super burned out barrels. A lot of these AKs had floated in from all over the world. Uh, you know, the Soviet invasion of, of Afghanistan in the 1970s. These AKs had been through the ringer. And so you're talking about barrels that have had tens and tens and tens of thousands of rounds through them without ever having a barrel change or really much maintenance at all. So you have a lot of really burned out barrels that are being compared to nice fresh rifles and people are wondering why they're holding 10 MOA. The second reason being everybody that the US troops had come up against using AKs at this point had been relatively untrained. So it's not hard to get the assumption that your enemy's weapons aren't that accurate when they're trying to engage you in the Afghani shitter position. Now with that being said, it's really not terribly hard to understand where this whole misconception that the AKs couldn't hit the broad side of a barn came from. It started to become ingrained in the consciousness of people who are weapon savvy or ex-military guys that the legendary reliability of the AK platform came at the expense of accuracy, which leads me to point number three. Now reason number three is lack of knowledge about how the AK platform actually operates. Now it almost ties in perfectly with that misconception that the rugged reliability of the AK came at the expense of the accuracy. People started to invent reasons why that was possible or why that was happening. And one of the things that they said is that the, the reliability comes from the loose tolerances of the AK platform, which is partially true. And they said those loose tolerances are the same reason why it's not accurate. And that is bullshit. You could see, and some of the best videos on the internet for this are Larry Vickers' videos uh, on the super slow motion AKs. The guy has just brilliant camera equipment. It's amazing. And uh, it, it shows the operation of the AK at a level that is really hard to conceptualize any other way than the equipment that he uses. You can see that when that bolt carrier is reciprocating 
and all the, the stamped uh, receiver is just flexing and everything's flexing in the rear of the gun. Uh, it's not hard to see why people might think that that would contribute to a lack of accuracy. But here's what the average gun guy, I would probably say, doesn't understand about accuracy, is that none of that shit behind the bolt lockup matters. Seriously, you could cut the damn receiver in half and just let the whole bolt and bolt carrier fly out of the back of the damn gun. It's not going to affect your accuracy at all, because the accuracy is bolt lockup forward. Okay? Nothing that is not directly attached to the bolt or the barrel is going to affect your accuracy because that bullet is already left and it, it's it's entirely in the lockup as long as you have tight head space none of that behind there matters and that's why uh, for example part of the, the the claims that milled receiver AKs are way more accurate which the jury's kind of out on that but it is vastly exaggerated what it mostly comes down to on the AK platform is barrel harmonics tight head spacing and a good barrel and a good crown and all that. As long as you have a nice tight lockup and those tolerances right there are good, it's not going to affect your reliability at all. In fact, it's probably going to aid in your reliability and it does not, it, it, it makes the weapon perfectly functionally accurate. And so it was like the ultimate FUD line. It's, it's just, it is so annoying to hear it gun shows and, and, you know, people, the average layman talking about the AK, talking about, oh yeah, the loose tolerances or why it's, you know, it's so reliable, but it's just not accurate. You can't get that kind of accuracy out of it. That's complete horseshit. It, it, anybody who can tell you anything about ballistics and how barrels actually work know that none of that back there actually matters. So I'm sorry to harp on this point so much, but it's just a little irritating because it is just, it shows a lack of understanding, but it is a very, very popular view. Now that kind of ties into point number four. And this is gonna be kind of like a two-parter. This is going to be uh, a point about builds and why build quality is kind of, uh, or especially early AK build quality in the United States has led to the rise of that myth. And uh, part two, basically all the stuff that you can do to make sure that the AK you're building is as accurate as possible. So let's go ahead and get started with the first part. So in the early days of AK building in the United States and still a little bit today, there are some less than qualified builders that were using very poor headspace, uh, less than ideal quality barrels, uh, quality of barrel presses, uh, bent barrels, all sorts of just really nasty stuff that led to the first early AK kit builds not being of superb quality. Uh, in fact, there were even some cases like the infamous uh, Century Arms Tantals where they weren't even using the right caliber barrels. They were using, it was an AK-74, and they were using 5.56 caliber barrels on a 5.45 bullet. They were just recutting the chamber for a 5.45, which is a no-no, and that's why they would keyhole like shit at 50 yards. And uh, I can't tell you how many barrel swaps I've had to do on Tantals. And so there's just all sorts of weird crap that people did to AKs because of that conception that they're just like, AKs aren't accurate, so it doesn't matter. You know, nobody's using this for accuracy. And so that is why the inaccuracy of the AK platform is almost entirely a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because people treat it like just an AK, and accuracy won't matter. They feel like it's okay to take shortcuts, and that's why so many of the AKs that are floating out there will live up to the hype of having shit accuracy because people treat them like a gun that's supposed to have shit accuracy. And so it is very much a self-fulfilling prophecy. And uh, you'll, you'll definitely run into that a lot on a lot of older builds that were done by less qualified builders. And that kind of leads me to the second part of this, which is, you know, what can a builder do to make sure the AK that he's building is as accurate as possible? And how to really get the most out of the AK platform is something that you can really stretch out there to five, 600 yards and be hitting fairly consistently with. The number one thing, of course, is barrel quality. Like any other gun that you're trying to get accuracy out of, barrel quality matters. So really do your homework and make sure that the barrel you're using is a good quality metal. Uh, if you're looking for like a nitrided barrel versus a cold hammer forged barrel with a chrome lining, be sure to know the pros and cons of both and just use a, a barrel that's, that's good. Odds are, if you're getting a barrel for $50 on the internet, it may not be the best for long range accuracy. So just kind of keep that in mind. I'm not really going to get into the debate of the chrome lining versus nitriding for accuracy. Uh, that is a whole different bag of cats that I'm not going to try to grapple with tonight. But uh, just do your homework, uh, read the right forums, 
and kind of take everything with a grain of salt and just kind of figure out, uh, use common sense basically, and, and make sure you've got good information. Another thing you can do to make sure your AK is as accurate as possible is make sure you have the right headspace. If your gun is out of headspace, it is going to affect your accuracy. You want a nice, tight lockup. A lot of the same rules apply as building a nice, accurate, long-range bolt-action gun. Just think about, it, think about it as like an assisted bolt action. So the only difference is you actually have a gas system running the bolt instead of your hand. You still want a nice, good, accurate barrel with a nice, tight, firm lockup. The third thing is understanding barrel harmonics. Now, the jury's also kind of out as to how much this matters on a gas-operated rifle, but it is an important thing to remember. Um, the less things that you have, especially on an AK where it's pressed and pinned, um, the less things you have contacting your barrel, the better your accuracy is going to be. Especially one of the one of the drawbacks I think to the AK platform is uh, the front sight block being all the way at the end of the barrel, uh, and that acts as you know a muzzle brake retent and a front sight block, obviously. But I think there's a lot of merit to the gas block combos, where you're still retaining the front sight, but you're removing one extra part that is attached to the barrel. It's actually physically pressed and pinned onto the barrel, um, especially all the way at the end of the barrel. I um, mean, it, it, the shit really matters. So the less things you can have contact in the barrel, the better. So ideally, in an ideal world, um, the closest thing you can get to a free float AK right now would be something where the front sight block is removed and you've got a front sight block gas block combo and you have the lower handguard retainer removed and some sort of handguard that doesn't actually contact the barrel at any point because the the just having a lower handguard retainer that is actually <laughs> levered onto the barrel and a front sight block all the way at the end it can't help your accuracy now again it's another debate as to how much that's actually going to affect it but if you're really trying to get those long range shots it's really not great oh and another kind of aside to that is uh, a lot of people who shoot long range with AKs like to take the cleaning rod out uh, not something I really would have thought of, just kind of one of those things that doesn't cross your mind, but uh, apparently I, apparently it matters. I, and I can see why. Again, you've got something else that is contacting the length of the barrel. So does it affect accuracy so much? I don't know. Jury's out. We might do like a comparison contrast sort of thing with that. But uh, these are all things to keep in mind when you're talking about making the AK as accurate as possible. And another little thing that might help is also getting an upgraded trigger like a CMC or an ALG AKT, something nice and light, so you don't have a crazy heavy trigger pull or a long trigger pull. Um, these are all things that are gonna add up. That's not really a barrel thing, it's just kind of one of those shooter preference, but uh, these are all little things that you can do to milk the most out of the accuracy of your AK. So those are what I think the top four reasons people think that the AK platform is not accurate, and something I think is completely false for the record. I feel like AK accuracy is very possible to achieve if you use common sense building practices and the right caliber setup. So we're gonna be actually doing a couple long range things in 2019, uh, some of which are going to be released or at least shown to you guys very soon. So I'm excited for that. This was kind of a lead up to that. Um, I, I was talking to some people about, you know, all the reasons people think AKs aren't accurate. And I thought, you know, screw it. We'll just do a video. So uh, those are some of the things that I think lead to that misconception. If I missed one, please let me know in the comments, or if you flat out disagree, Brandon, you're a shithead, this isn't true, uh, please, by all means, politely call me out in the comments, but if you gotta be a dick, go right ahead. So, I appreciate you guys sticking through all the way through this video, and tell you what, I'm in the, the Oprah mood, I'm giving away two t-shirts for the top comments of this video. We'll probably do that in about a week, um, so, top comments, say something interesting, say something engaging, or just say something completely balls out funny. So uh, thank you guys so much for staying to the end of the video. I'm looking forward to showing you all sorts of the cool stuff that we have planned for 2019. And uh, yeah, stay safe and we'll see you at SHOT Show. Fuck, that's not next week. Uh, I will see you next Monday. The AK pop... I got this. The AK population? Yeah, that's nice. The Alaskan people did not have much experience with AKs. There's, there's for your blooper reel there, I figured. People are starting to ask about the blooper reel. Why isn't the blooper reel there? Here you go, fuckers. Hey, is any sports bars open? Actually, I think the one at the very end is uh, the Bowery. Now, rule, no rule number three. Yeah, nope, not rule. Now, reason number three is the lack of 
That was clunky. I didn't like that. All right, try that one again. Uh, that whole thing was a clusterfuck. Can I just start over? <laughs> yeah, let's see.